Today's lesson is the beginning of a series that's looking at the events leading up to the completed temple where the Ark of the Covenant would reside forever. And we see King Solomon calling together the elders, the leaders, and the tribes of the, the fathers and all the congregation because this is a long-awaited celebration that was about to begin. Uh, so today's topic is celebration, a place for the Ark of the Covenant, and it's taken out of 1 Kings, the 8th chapter, verses 1 through 13. I will re read uh, some of the verses, and we will begin our lesson from there. And it reads as follows. Then Solomon assembled the elders of Israel and all the heads of the tribes, the chiefs of the fathers of the children of Israel, unto King Solomon in Jerusalem, that they might bring up the ark of the covenant of the Lord out of the city of David, which is Zion. And all of the Israel of Israel, all the elders of Israel came, and the priests took up the ark. And they brought up the ark of the Lord and the tabernacle of the congregation and all of the holy vessels that were in the tabernacle, even those did the priests and the Levites bring up. And King Solomon and all the congregation of Israel that were assembled unto him were with him before the ark, sacrificing sheep and oxen that could not be told, not numbered for the multitude. And the priest brought in the Ark of the Covenant and the, of the Lord unto his place, and to the inner and to the oracle of the house of the most holy place, even under the wings of the cherubim. Uh, for the cherubim spread forth their two wings over the place of the ark, and the cherubim covered the ark, and the stave thereof. I will stop there and begin with, uh, uh, with the lesson. Uh, our focus today is on the celebration that will occur in uh, at the Ark of the Covenant had a permanent residing place and asked these questions. What were the reason for the celebration? One, the Israelites were celebrating because throughout the years of their journey from Israel, their forefathers and the Ark of the Covenant was being carried with them and residing in tents. Therefore, it finally had a permanent place to reside where they could come and worship. The people celebrated the Ark of the Covenant as it represented the presence of God being with them, so much so that his glory was felt when he filled the temple with his presence. Uh, the Israelites was joyful because there was a place of worship for they could come together and worship the Lord in spirit and in truth, as we are so instructed in John 4 and 24. So the next question comes to mind, as we see from the, the outline that I just given, why we are they were so in such a celebratory mood, is that what was the significance of the timing of the celebration? The timing was significant because it was in keeping with the festival that was celebrated in the seventh month of the year. And this festival was the festival of booths or tabernacle, which was a week long or uh, seven day celebration where the Jews, people would remember their journey from Egypt to their permanent home in Canaan. The feast, what is the feast of the booth? It commonly goes by another name, the season of our joy. For joy predominates on this holiday more than any other. 
The Jewish people around the world construct Sukkot uh, as a fruits, frail huts, a booth, a booth that reminded them of God's provision and their dependence on God. Sukkah is a memorial to remind us of the building of booths during their, uh, their ancestors' wandering in the wilderness. The Feast of Tabernacle was an annual reminder to the people of God that is, he is the great shepherd who has chosen to live among them, to protect and to bless them wherever they wandered. So, yes, it's a significance. We can see the significance of the timing of this occurrence. So this, before I give another one, I want to say this, we have uh, events that we celebrate, such as our church anniversaries. People celebrate wedding anniversaries as a time of remembrance. And our church celebration is, uh, the church's anniversary, is that we celebrate and remember from the church's humble beginnings until where we've come to at that particular time or that day and time. And the other point I want to make here is that the Ark of the Covenant had been long symbolized as the presence of God being with the Israelites as their forefathers journeyed in the wilderness of wherever else did they travel. Just to remember how far God had brought them was a reason to celebrate and to give praises unto him and his goodness. Another point uh, I want to make here is that uh, the Ark of the Covenant had been residing in a tent that David had built for them after the, he had uh, built his, his home, elaborate home. And he said, now I'm going to build, uh, bring it and build it and put it in a tent, and which he did, because his ultimate desire was to build a, the temple, but that wasn't God's desire, okay? So it was God's desire that King Solomon, David's son, was going to build the temple, and and which he, we, he did. And this we see that he is getting ready to bring the, the Ark of the Covenant out of the city of David into this temple that they had completed. And uh, the temple also represented a place of worship where all the people could go and worship God, singing praises to his holy name. So, and, and I want to just interject something here, is that when we come together and worship, see, in our modern day now, we have churches, the Jews have synagogues, the Muslims have mosques, Witness, Jehovah Witnesses have halls, but it's a place that where we can come and worship God and be on one, of God, one accord, giving praises to his holy name. And we shall to come and to worship him in spirit and truth. Now, what does this mean? That means that our spirit is supposed to connect with God's spirit. And we have come to worship him, as I said, and I don't mean to sound like a broken record, but to worship him in spirit and in truth. That's how we must worship. We are not go there to entertain anybody, but we are all just coming together on one accord. And this is in keeping with what the scripture says, where there's two or three gathered together in my name, I will be in the midst. And we see here, uh, God provided his approval of the temple and they move in the Ark of the Covenant uh, when he filled the temple with a cloud as a dedication service began. So here we see that uh, King Solomon being, i uh, say, a righteous man or a praying man, uh, he prayed the dedication prayer, thanking God because he had been uh, the nation of Israel, he had been with them from the time of their humble beginning, when he brought them up out of Egypt under the leadership of Moses. He had been the same God who protected them and provided for them 
on that journey. And we can remember that uh, when they was out there in the, the wilderness, in the desert, how he prepared them manna, uh, and he gave them water from a rock. They didn't have to go and and um, and toil for all of that, that food. God provided it through his own provision or divine provision or care. And on, a, on only that, he, their clothes and shoes didn't even wear out, okay? And in doing that journey, he was as a cloud, as a covering to cover them and protect them from that desert heat. Uh, and then he provided a light uh, and when they, for their nighttime travel. So he, we see from this that, yes, God had been with the nation of Israel even from their early days. And when they, and who can forget when he provided a highway on dry land through the, uh, the Red Sea and there was danger in, uh, coming behind him from Pharaoh's and his army. And there was the Red Sea in front of him. And Moses called out to God. And he just, God, he, God, just opened up the Red Sea. And all those people could uh, travel through the Red Sea on dry land. And after they made it to the other side, God just folded the sea back over and drowned all of their enemy. Yes, God provides, and he is our protector. And... Uh, then he had been with them. He fought many battles for them and, and while they were on their way. He, he um, provided, got them to the land of Cana. He told them what it would contain. And it did when uh, um, the spy, spies were sent to spy out and see what was in the land. We know the two brought back a, a positive um, report and two of them doubted and what I would call that would be a faith failure but then they went on and took care of the land okay so we can see if we look back through the history of Israel and how God provided how he protected and what all he done for them yes this is a celebratory time and any time we can stop and remember the goodness of the God is worth is is praise worthy and we he 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 takes care of us today just as he did the nation of israel um we go to and from our daily uh, routines or activities and we go safely there to and from you know that's god's grace and that is praise worthy and every now and then if you don't do it daily just stop and say lord i thank you because you brought me. I thank you because you kept me. You know, um, God is faithful to his promises. Uh, he never fails. He's a God who cannot lie. And whatever he says, it is going to come to pass. So this brings me to this question. And the question is, what does this say for us today? It tells me God is faithful in keeping his promises today, just as he was during the Bible days and the lives of the nation of Israel. We are to remain faithful to him and draw near to God, and we are draw near to him. And this also brings to my mind one of my favorite scriptures, 2 Chronicles 7:14. But God asked his people to do certain things. He said, if we humble ourselves, we pray, seek his face, and then turn from our wicked ways, then he will do the Father. He said, we will heal, he will forgive, and he'll heal our land. So if I can interject something here today, this nation needs a healing and who the, our people is called his people and here we are talking about the the, the focus of the subject of, of the characters in this story is the nation of israel and uh king solomon is reminding them you know of yes of god's goodness his faithfulness 
And he's the same God. He didn't change. He cannot change, neither can he lie. For however he, why he kept the nation of Israel and brought them to permanence, he'll do the same thing for you and I. And he's still doing the same thing for you and I. But uh, we still have to humble ourselves before God. We have to seek his face in prayer. Prayer is a form of worship, whether we believe it or not. And we should always pray and thank if, even if we're not asking him for nothing. It's good to just to say, thank you, Lord, for another day's journey. What is it? We woke us up this morning. We have activities and things we have to do within that day. That's the journey. And we thank him. It is good, and I repeat, it is good to just to say, thank you. Thank you, Father because you brought me, because you kept me, because you saved me. We were saved through his son, Jesus Christ. That's praiseworthy. All right? So, yes, we need to pray and thank God and walk in his ways, not our ways, because they are not the same. And the other thing I want to just point out here is that, uh, for a while to start preaching on how we should just give God all the praise and the glory and honor because he's worthy. We need to take ourselves off our little thrones and put God on there and let it, everything work out fine. And uh, we also, uh, the nation of Israel provides an example of how when they obeyed God, they were blessed. And when they disobeyed God, they were punished. And that's the same thing that I'm trying to say to us. Uh, when we humble ourselves before God, the Almighty God, and give Him all the praise and the glory and the honor that He so richly deserves, and walk in His, His ways, we will be blessed. He will bless us so bountifully until we will wonder, Lord, what is all this happening? That's the same thing. And it's sometimes just read about the nation of Israel. It's in the scripture. It's all in the Old Testament. So we should have uh, a thanksgiving and a praying spirit to God. Yeah, we're going to need some things and we have to go to God and petition God for those things. But I'll say this, even in the midst of asking God for something, we should always acknowledge who he is offer him thanksgiving and praise, then we need to confess our sins and we need to then make our supplications to God. God is never unworthy of our thanksgiving because he does so much for us. He just can't tell it all. Now, the other point I want to make here is that Believers today should have a spirit of celebration any time we come into the house of God because we are there to worship and to commune with God, our creator and sustainer, who keeps us if we are in a storm or if we are out of the storm. God is still there with us. He's true to his word that he will never leave us nor forsake us. And, and if you have ever been in a storm and you didn't see your way out and, and when you prayed and asked God for deliverance and he delivered you, it was him who delivered you. We should stop and say, Lord, I thank you for your deliverance. I thank you because of your love. Hmm. I thank you because of your grace and I thank you because of your mercy which endures forever and ever and I'll say again it is praiseworthy a celebratory time even any time we can come into the presence of God we don't always have to be in a dedication service or a worship service uh, just stop and say, Lord, I thank you. Even during the day, 
Me personally, I have my me time with God early in the morning where I pray, I read the scriptures, then then we have, and I said this song that let us have a little talk with Jesus. And I said, let me just have a little talk with Jesus. And I, when we talk to him, I can tell you this, he'll make everything all right. And another thing that we should be a celebratory because we in this country and so many other countries uh, have the freedom to worship God without fear of being persecuted by those who are enemies against God and his people. Uh, we can worship God in the presence of our home, just you and God, one-on-one. -on -one. And I like to note here, there are so many countries uh, this day that doesn't have the freedom to worship God without fear of being persecuted. Um, I look at some people over in some parts of China and in some parts of India that they have to worship God in secrecy. They can't worship him openly like we here in America can. Um, um, and that's, that's a sad commentary because God is a God of all, regardless of what country you're living in. Because the focus of this today's lesson is about the nation of Israel over there in Jerusalem. And so we see that, yes, it is open to all of us to worship. Whether we were born Jews or we were non-Jews, we still have the freedom of worship. Uh, as I said earlier, we worship God during our prayer time because prayer is a form of worship. And it's a joyous case to know that we can serve a God who will never, ever leave us. Neither will he forsake us. And he's never too busy to, con for, to commune with us because he wants to hear from us. He wants to be in close relation, an uh, intimate relationship with him. Uh, we, it is also a celebration, a celebratory just to know that we as individual believers of temples of God, the Holy Spirit, who lives in us. And we, therefore, we must keep our bodies holy and pure because God cannot live in an unclean house. And just like the church where the congregation come together and worship is a holy place and it is the Holy Spirit will reside in there, just as we see that was happening in the temple during this dedication ceremony. So, in action, that are stating that our bodies are temples of God, this question comes to mind. How do we keep our bodies pure and holy? This is accomplished by presenting our bodies as living sacrifices to God. We die daily to self and sin and corruption because we recognize and appreciate that we have been cleansed by the blood of Jesus. Oh, what a God we have to glorify. And lastly, Celebration is in order any time God's people come together in his house to sing praises unto his holy name, glorifying him and thanking him with our giving for his blessings upon us and for his love and his grace and his mercy. We know that we are never out of the reach of God, even when we were uh, enemies of God and that means we were unsaved God the Son Jesus Christ took our sins upon him and I like to use this analogy when we were sinners we were son of the bridge of sin and degradation but Jesus Christ the Son of God came down and pulled us up out of 
the sin of unrighteousness and he gave us his righteousness on the cross and he took our unrighteousness oh what a god we have a god to glorify and a savior to praise and a holy spirit to thank for living inside of us that's god's glove his unconditional love yes we celebrate we celebrate for different reasons but none is as worthy as celebrating god the father god the son and god the holy spirit the triune god for the works that he's done in our lives and it is closed with this prayer dear heavenly father i thank you for speaking through me and allow this message to be a blessing to someone who might hear this word and know that yes when we dedicate our lives you're dedicating a temple when we give it over to god and give it back to you and say lord he is my life i'll make you the head of my life i thank you for giving your son jesus who died for my sins and now i'm assured of having eternal life where i will live forever in your presence so we i can join the heavenly choir the same praises unto your holy name and father continue to speak through me as i dedicate myself to sharing the truth of your word Lord, we thank you as we pray in this prayer in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen.